Most comedians wouldn't be jailed for telling a joke. But that's the risk Kambi's Hosseini would face if he were telling his jokes in Iran. Instead, he is one of the most famous and controversial Iranians in exile. Clips from his Farsi language satirical show often get hundreds of thousands of hits on Facebook. Many more Iranian viewers watch the program on illegal satellite TV on a channel funded by the U.S. government. The U.S. and Iran don't have problems in Washington now, do they? Iran's foreign minister and secretary of state John Kerry takes selfies left and right. They go out for a kebab. People like Ayatollah Khamenei, they have problem with uh, getting criticized, you know, they, they don't like criticism, and especially in humor. It's the type of humor Hosseini couldn't perform in Iran. His work there had to be pro-regime. He came to the U.S. 15 years ago and now runs his program from this warehouse in Brooklyn, New York. His show Politique is an alternative to the usual fare on Iran's official TV. While it airs state-sponsored prayers, Hosseini accuses Iranian officials of exploiting religion. You're the prophet. His witty style has inspired comparisons with Jon Stewart. In fact, Stewart has had Hosseini on The Daily Show. So you calling me a prophet will in no way get me in trouble, will it? Um... We joined Hosseini and his team of expat Iranians on their weekly Skype call. While these guys are putting together the script, down the hallway in another room, there is another team that is preparing graphics and video in the same way that most newscasts are put together here in the U.S. Except in this room, there is one big difference. These Iranian Americans told us they're afraid to show their faces on camera. I asked this writer why. Our families still live in Iran, and unfortunately the security forces put a lot of pressure on the families of people who are working abroad in the media, and we want to prevent that. Hosseini says Iranian authorities pressured his brother and sister to get him to stop ridiculing the supreme leader. He didn't, so his siblings fled to the U.S. My, my family has been harassed many times, which is, which is yeah, of course, that's, that's a price I paid too. It's a big price for big laughs. Three, two, one, action. But Iranian-American activists say Hosseini's humor is filling a void in Iran. Because this kind of political humor cannot be produced inside the country and yet speaks to the hearts and minds of people, uh, what can be done is very much welcome inside Iran. Conservative Iranian websites churn out scathing articles about Hosseini. Some are personal attacks. This report claims he has improper relations with women. It's all lie, propaganda, uh, and bunch of nonsense. It's also a reason Hosseini can't go home, at least for now. Until he can, he hopes to make an impact there from here, one joke at a time. I really hope to make Iran a better place to live um, for everybody. And if it can be through the satire, let it be, you know. <laughs>
really deliver all these things because they're really important to me. Three decades after that show, which was a very popular show in Iran, I had to wake up 6 a.m. every morning to do that show. In 2009, I started this show called Parasite, which means static, TV static in English. And uh, this show became uh, viral in a few months. And it was, our Facebook page was the first page, first Iranian page that hit a million uh, back in 2009. And then after that show, uh, I started a podcast that became a radio show, picked up by Radio Free Europe, produced by International Campaign for Human Rights in Iran. And, and then now I have this show that you saw uh, called Politique. Before you know, I say anything else, I want, I want to talk about my material to you and what, what kind of materials I use. So I want to, I want to share my pain. Uh, with you, what kind of material I, I, I use every day, and, and what is it that uh, that I do? I, I have to tell you that I've been really blessed um, as a, as an Iranian comedian, uh, as there there has been no shortage of uh, uh, material for me. And uh, th there are some easy politicians, and there are some hard politicians to make fun of. Um, Mr. Ahmadinejad was the easy one. So for for me, uh, doing Ahmadinejad and, and trying to uh, you know, uh, do a joke about him was very easy because he would come out and say, hey, there's no homosexuals in Iran, I would, and I would just play the soundbite and just do this, you know. Uh, but right now, uh, we have a, a moderate president uh, in office uh, in Iran, and as, as you might know, and there are uh, uh, hundreds of Iranians living in exile, including myself, for a political reason, and uh, they cannot back to their, go back to their homeland. Um, now, Mr. Rouhani, for instance, he says that Iran belongs to all Iranians and, uh, and everybody should uh, come back. So clap. And then, then right after that, two days after that, this guy. ما ممنون ورود نمی کنیم که بگیم حق وارد شدن به کشور رو نداره ولی حتما وقتی وارد شد به اتهام او رسیدگی میشه I didn't even do anything you know they I have to just be you know I have to just play this and just be and just hey that's it and you started laughing and that was one example the other example is uh, the, the other guy he is he is a foreign minister very very um, um, very charming, Charlie Rose. Uh, we do not jail people for their opinions. <laughs> you know, I have a slide here for you. Yeah, you can, you can go through it. I don't have to read it. These, these people did nothing to you, Mr. Zarif. <laughs> you know, these people spoke peacefully, just writing, attending uh, uh, peaceful protests and similar activities. They did nothing, to, uh, you know, it's just... I just need to, right after what he says, I just need to play this for people uh, that they are in jail right now or, or, or they have been in jail uh, previously. So, as you can imagine, I wasn't a comedian. They forced me to be one. How? Um, I was reporting on serious issues. And when I did that, like yourself, people started laughing. I thought you should cry. You know, I thought many, many issues that I raised in my show, I think people should cry, but people will start laughing. And uh, I, I just want to point out some couple, I'll give you a couple of examples. Just, just imagine this. Iran promoted dialogue among civilization. The UN even named uh, year 2000 after it. And then it still is one of the biggest prisons for journalists in the world, showing intolerance towards religious and ethnic minorities. It's a comedy. Imagine this one. Iran is among the top five countries in the world with oil and gas resources, and still 70% of Iranian workers live below the poverty line. It's a comedy. Iran's political system is based on Sharia law, as you know, and you might think in such a paradise-driven society, uh, you know, there should be no corruption. I hope there's no corruption in paradise or heaven. But on the contrary, the system couldn't breed without corruption. It's a comedy. And so if you, if you want to do real journalism in Iran, it turns to comedy. Because the journalism, they're doing the kind of journalism, that's fiction. <laughs> that's very creative. And they treat everybody like 10 years old, like myself. 
when I was 10 years old. This is how they treat everybody. Uh, media does that. The state-run media does that. And, 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 and just why I think satire is effective and, and important, um, it's because when you talk about politics or serious issues for Iranian, they think, they think this, is, this, is, this, is not, this, this belongs to elites. They dis disengage. They don't, uh, they don't really listen to, to what you want to say if it's really serious. But the comedy, satire, to, to, uh, to, uh, the, my job is to, to make uh, complicated issues are very simple for people. When, when it's simple through the comedy, they understand. When they understand, they get engaged. When they get engaged, they're ready to change what bothers them, what bothers me, what bothers everybody. Uh, majority of people in Iran, and to make and, and what 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 does it take to make a comedy strong, uh, to my opinion, and powerful and, and effective? When you fight and struggle with a powerful and effective and flexible uh, propaganda machinery like like what Iranian uh, regime does nowadays, the only tool to win hearts and minds is honesty, truth, and common sense. I think, and and you don't have to try to be funny. You don't have to try. You just need to be honest to yourself and others, be truthful, and just use common sense to, to do the comedy. And, 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 to, uh, and even uh, to, in our show, even if, if, if an official does something good, it's not black and white to me. If they do something good, we mention that. And um, uh, we try to be like, fair. We reflect that. And, because I think it's not black and white. It's not about them anyway. You know, It's not about them. So if, if it's about the society, progress of the society, be constructive in the society. Um, at the end of the day, for me, it's about human values. And, and, and as you know, in order to do comedy, you have to take side. If you don't take side, there is no other side to make fun of. So you have to take side in order to make fun of the other side. The side I've taken is truth, common sense, and human values. I try to stick with this. This is, this is my struggle. This is... This is my try. Am I alone? Uh, no. There are millions of people uh, with the same values. Am I there? Uh, no. I'm, uh, um, I'm trying, like I said. Many, many, many are trying. Lots of ups and downs, and, and it's, a, it's a constant effort. There is, a, there is a lot to do, and fight is far from over. For me, uh, it's just a torch I'm taking from, uh, from others. I'm just passing it up. And... and what, uh, and what, what motivates me is, is very important. Because I, I, I think motivation is the core of what we do. If we're not motivated, we can't do anything. So what motivates me, if you, uh, I don't know if you, many of you remember, in, in 2009 there was an election, and a few days after the disputed 2009 presidential election, tr almost three million people uh, came uh, to the streets of Tehran to object the result of the election peacefully and silently. Still, they were not tolerated. But these people who have found their path through nonviolent methods to fight oppression, people who, uh, who know what they want and what they don't want, people who have the experience of carrying a very costly revolution on their shoulder drive me to do what I do. These are the people. As you can see, there is no violence. It's peaceful and silent. And just keep in mind, this country is between Afghanistan and Iraq. <laughs> just so you know. People who know the only ones who crave for a revolution are the ones who haven't had one. Uh, and, and or have not learned lessons from the ones they had before. So, so to answer your question, if Iran can take a joke, I, I, think, I think Iran can, uh, as they responded very well to, 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 to my show. But uh, Iranian officials can take a joke? I don't think so, because I'm here. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>